Hi, I'm Dr. Diana Londoño. I'm a board certified urologist in Los Angeles. And today I wanna to talk to you about Foley catheters. I'm gonna to explain to you why they're placed, what kind of catheters we use and what they're for, how to um, you know, use the drainage bags and there's different ones, what sizes we use and why, and also just how to clean, how to flush it. So let's get started to learn more about these. So the most common reason why a Foley catheter is placed is because you may not be able to empty your bladder at all. You stop peeing, you go into something called retention. So in order to help with the discomfort, to prevent kidney damage, bleeding, or infections, the catheter will be placed. Sometimes you may still be emptying your bladder, but you may be leaving a lot of residual urine inside after you pee, and it can be quite uncomfortable. So even if you're not able to not pee at all, it still may be needed to help relieve your symptoms. Also, if you had surgery of the prostate to remove all the prostate for prostate cancer or the inner channel due to prostate surgery for enlargement of the prostate, a catheter is left in place to let everything heal and also to prevent any bleeding if the inner channel is open so that it can flow easily and also heal. If there has been a surgery of your bladder for a bladder tumor and it was large, it would also help heal the bladder if a catheter is left for a few days. If there's been an injury, any trauma, or even surgery for fistulas or abnormal connections, this would be a reason why a catheter is placed. Also, if you're a woman and you've had an incontinence surgery, it is not uncommon that a catheter can be left in place after surgery for a few days. Your surgeon will guide you on how long the catheter may stay and when it will be removed. <clears throat> you could also have a catheter place if there was a narrowing of the urethra and it was stretched open or dilated. The catheter may be left in place to allow the urine to drain after the urethra has been opened up. You may also have a catheter place for other types of surgeries to protect the bladder when they do the surgery. In many laparoscopic or robotic surgeries, whether it's for your intestine, your appendix, or gallbladder, a catheter may be placed so that it can be empty and out of the way while they do the surgery. It could also be needed just to help you while you recover, maybe needed for a day or two, just while you're maybe in bed a lot more, just to help record the urine output. Also, if you're very sick, perhaps in the intensive care unit, and they need to have a good accurate measurement of what is given to you through the medications or IVs and what comes out, a catheter may be needed to get a good amount of information that is accurate. So those are the most common reasons why a catheter may be in place. Now, it could be placed under anesthesia if it's for another surgery that they're trying to protect the bladder or just to help you while you recover. But most of the time, these are placed by a nurse or a physician. So when we talk about catheters, I want to talk about different types of catheters. There's something called an intermittent catheterization, or you also called CIC, clean intermittent catheterization. And these can be done sometimes in the hospital and even sometimes by many patients who are unable to empty their bladder, but they don't have a catheter inside of them all the time. Why would that be the case? Well, it actually has a lower risk of infection to catheterize every few hours instead of keeping the catheter inside the whole time. So depending if you're a man or a woman, the catheter size may be different lengths. So if you're a woman, one example could be some of these catheters that come prepackaged in a little tube, and this catheter would then insert into the bladder it would drain out of here, and then you would throw it away after use. So these are just used every four hours. Usually, you empty your bladder and you throw it away. Obviously, for a man, the catheters are longer because you have to go through the urethra and go into the bladder. And this one is a CUDA catheter. If you can see, there's a little curve here. And these are used for men with enlarged prostates because the angle allows it to go easier into the bladder instead of going straight. This angle helps to go up. So if you have a CUDA catheter, always look at the angle 
and make sure it is pointing up towards the ceiling when you insert it. So it'll go up easier into the bladder. So those are called the coup de catheters. Again, used for enlarged prostate just to help you go into the bladder a lot easier. There's also something called the condom catheter, and this is not inside the bladder, and it is only used for men, and it really is just a condom that is put over the penis, and it has sticky adhesive. It sticks to the penis, and then you pee into this condom attached to a tube and a drainage bag. And that can be helpful for people that, you know, are able to urinate, but maybe have decreased mobility, or they have maybe too much leakage and they want to capture the leakage into a bag and not into, you know, their clothes or a diaper or their skin. So this could be a good option for those that are able to pee, but maybe need to collect it um, into a drainage container or bag. You also, again, have the indolent catheters. So it's different than the ones you just put in and out. And these would be placed, you know, into the bladder and then they stay in the bladder. And then you wonder, well, how do they stay in and not just come out? Well, every catheter has a balloon here. And this balloon can be inflated and that will help it stay inside the bladder. So after it goes into the bladder, all the urine is going to come out of this into a tube and they'll use sterile water and the balloon then will be inflated. As you can see, the balloon will be inflated and it will hold on into what's called the bladder neck so it won't just slip out. So that's how it will stay in place. There's a little opening here. The urine will go inside the tube and out to a bag. So that's the angel and catheters. Now these go in through the penis and man and the urethra or into the urethra in a woman. However, there is a possibility not to go through the urethra to bypass it and put it straight from the skin directly into the bladder. And that's called a suprapubic catheter. And the reason to use that could be that maybe perhaps there is damage to the urethra, there's a narrowing, we're unable to get into the urethra to the bladder, and we're trying to bypass it and get into the bladder. So especially in this example for men that have a stricture or narrowing, and they're going to have surgery to fix that, that could be placed either before or during or after surgery, just to have a protective mechanism to empty the bladder. Also, people that cannot empty their bladder at all and will need long-term catheters, if you place a suprapubic catheter, again, directly into the skin, into the bladder, that has a lower risk of infection than one that goes into the urethra. So the lowest risk of infection would be when you catheterize yourself every four hours, then would be the suprapubic catheter, and lastly, the catheter through the urethra. The consequences of having a catheter through the urethra for a long time is that it can, can cause an infection, it can be uncomfortable, and if you're a man, it could bleed because the prostate is there, and also it can cause something called erosion of the urethra. The urethra may kind of split open because of the pressure that this catheter places on the urethra, and once it opens, it's not reversible. So we want to prevent that because we don't want the urethra to open up that way. So that's the type of catheters there are. Now, it's really important that if your catheter comes out for some reason, that you call your physician right away. And especially if it's a super pubic catheter, because that tunnel that was created from the skin into the bladder can close up pretty quickly within a few hours. So it's important to replace a catheter before that closes. Now, these catheters, again, have this balloon port that's inflated, and after that, you don't really worry about this. Usually, the number of the catheter is written on here, and it'll say like a number like 16 French, 18 French. That's just the size of the diameter of this catheter. The larger the number, the larger the lumen, but the most common is called the 16 French. And um, there's this regular catheter that just this port will attach to the drainage bag. And there's another one called the three-way catheter, which is usually used when there's bleeding and or after surgery to open up the channel for enlarged prostate. 
So the difference with this, usually they tend to be wider and there's three channels here. One is for the balloon, another one's for the drainage bag, and this third one is where water is inserted in here that runs continuously to prevent bleeding. Usually once you go home, obviously there's no more water continuously going in, and they'll put a plug so that the urine doesn't drip all over you, and this is attached to the drainage bag. Okay, so that's a three-way catheter because it allows water to go in continuously if needed through this third channel, okay? So, you know, most people when they have a catheter may not feel too much discomfort. Some people definitely could feel frequency, urgency to pee even though they're constantly draining the bladder. And they may get something called a bladder spasm, which is a sensation of pain and it can be accompanied by leakage around the catheter that lasts just for a few seconds and it comes and goes. So that's called a bladder spasm. The bladder is contracting around the catheter because it's a foreign object and this pain comes. It is not dangerous, but it can be bothersome and again, it can make the clothes wet. So that's something that you could experience. You could also have some mild bleeding and that's not uncommon. It's important to drink lots of water, but if it's worsening, you gotta let your physician know. So if there's a lot of discomfort, like burning sensation, there are some medications, whether over the counter or prescription, such as azo or peridium, that makes everything orange, but it can help some of the discomfort. There's also some medications to decrease the spasms. And so those can be prescribed by your doctor if the spasms are just very uncomfortable or again, getting everything wet. So let your doctor know if these spasms are uncomfortable. There's also some medications if you're gonna have a catheter long-term that can hopefully help prevent infection. And that's something called Hiprex, which can be given twice a day. And it is not an antibiotic, but it's a antiseptic sort of medication that prevents the bacteria from building up. So it could be an option if you're getting recurrent infections while having a catheter. It's important to know that if a catheter is in place, whether through the urethra or penis or suprapubically, it has to be changed every four weeks. So leaving a catheter longer than that can cause infections or calcium buildup around the balloon, which can make it difficult to be removed. So every four weeks, that catheter has to be changed. So when should you call your doctor? Well, if you're having a fever, if the urine is getting very cloudy with fever or discomfort, that's an occasion to call. If there's bleeding that is getting worse and it is not draining because of the bleeding, you gotta call your doctor. If it doesn't drain at all, also call your doctor. And if you feel like the spasms are just continuing and they're uncomfortable, call them to let them know to see if a medication can be prescribed. The symptoms that could be a symptom of an infection, so also call them to see if that may be warranted to evaluate. Also, if your catheter came out for any reason, let them know right away, especially if it's super pubic, this is an emergency. And if you're a man and your testicles have swollen or are painful, let your doctor know, because this could be a sign of an infection that the urine has now infected the testicles and that needs antibiotics in evaluation. So people always ask me, how do you clean this catheter? Can you take a shower? Yes, you can take a shower with a catheter and it's okay to use soap and water. Most people disconnect it from the drainage bag and just go in with a shower with a catheter dangling and they just wash, you know, again, soap and water, dry it off and then connect it. Some people go in with a bag um, as long as it doesn't have any cloth um, in the strap. So that, that way they don't make it wet, but you can definitely go in the shower, wash clean, or just clean around uh, you know, with a sponge uh, as well. And it's important to do so. So don't be afraid to not touch it or do anything. Just go ahead and clean with soap and water. If you have a catheter that has a lot of debris or it's not draining well, or there's blood, there's a way that you can flush it if you were told how to do so or give them the supplies. And usually they give you a syringe with a container that has water or sterile saline, and you will basically draw up 
the irrigation fluid into the syringe. So you'll draw it up. You will disconnect the catheter and you will insert it into the middle port. You will make sure it's snug and then you will insert that saline into the catheter. It's a good idea to pinch it here so it doesn't come out. And usually I try to do at least two catheters full so that there's something in the bladder to really be able to draw out. So you would get the container again and draw out the water again a second time. You can do it with one, but it's easier to do with two. And once there's again enough water, you would put it into the port, hold it tight, insert it, and then you can pull back to draw out any debris or any clots. So you can kind of go in and out a couple of times just to kind of get debris or clots out. Basically you repeat until clear or as instructed by your doctor. So that's one way to flush if you were told to do so or you had the supplies to do so. So that's usually with a through a catheter, but you could also do it with a regular catheter if needed. So if this was helpful, please share, please subscribe to the channel and take care of yourselves. Thank you so much.